So, first of all, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and today we want to talk a little bit about Mapkins. As most of you will be familiar with Mapkins, let's just do a short survey. Who of you is frequently using Mapkins? <laughs> oh, I guess that number we can improve. Um, so please listen in carefully, because for every single company over here and for everyone who likes Mapkins and who likes corporate, develop or corporate design and stuff, this talk might be relevant and you might be wondering, hey, how does it connect to Camunda? And I'm here to talk about that a little bit today, how we use Camunda to make sure that you get a good profile print on a napkin, for example. Okay, first of all... Uh, well, doesn't, that's fine. First of all, a very few words about Dooney and our background a little bit. So Dooney is a company with around 2,400 employees. We are located with over in Malmö with our headquarter and we have production sites in several countries. The company was started in 1949 and we have a turnover around uh, 4,400 million sec a year, approximately. And we're stock located. So if we look at Dooney all over the world, you can see that there are many points on the map, mostly in Europe and Central Europe. But we also have some places in Singapore and New Zealand. So we're expanding a little bit and all over the world. And as you can see, many locations, many different countries involved, and we're selling napkins everywhere. So no matter where you are in Europe, you have a good chance that you can purchase our napkins. And if you want a profile print, let us know. So there are just a very few more things that I would like to show, which is that we as Dooney, we have a good vertical integration, which means that we have a paper mill, we have the production sites, our sales units, and the paper mill is in Sweden. So, as said, a Swedish company, paper mill located there, and we have production sites in Bramsche, Poznan, uh, Wolkenstein, in Bangkok, New Zealand. So, again, many countries involved, and depending on where products are produced, you can imagine that there is quite some communication involved. As we're obviously not going to talk about napkins only today, I just want to show very few slides here. So, the first one is Skilpa for Sweden, our paper mill. You can see that there we are producing tissue, uh, sorry, uh, Dunilin, so material. Then there is a production site in Poland. It's not the whole building, but more like the top part. And you can see that there we are having all our machines, forklift drivers, warehousing stuff, and it's a really beautiful town. I can only recommend it. <coughs> and there is Bramsche. Bramsche is our biggest production site, which is this whole complex, including parts of logistics and some more warehouses around. So how does it add to the whole thing? We as Dooney offer you to build your own brand. And our customers expect that there are probably restaurants, there are caterers, elderly homes, or companies who are really into like a corporate design. And then we offer them, hey, you can have your logo or any kind of text that you would like to have, for example, a nice BPMN diagram on a napkin. And you can use it to show it to other customers. And just imagine if you're sitting in your cafeteria and you're offering a coffee to some customer and there's a nice napkin with your print on it. That's nice. And now these prints can be available all over Europe. So no matter where you are, we want to be able to sell you a nice profile print. So this is the base situation. And unfortunately, if we're talking to our sales team, they would disagree that we're a software company that is, by coincidence, producing applicants. So we are a sales company and we're actually with a big production site. And that has challenges for us. Because our IT department, we said that we're talking about 2,400 employees all over those countries. And in IT department, we're approximately 35 guys, uh, which are in system development, tech dev, and help desk. And we have a small team of uh, five who, is, who are working on process development. So like small teams. And historically, we're more focused on SAP, because that is our leading system. And uh, most of our system development is working there. So this is basically how we got here. And you might wonder, OK, now that we're standing here, how long did this road take? And I remember that when I joined Dooney in 2013, uh, I was sent to Camunda Community Day. And that is actually where the loop kind of connects again. Because basically back then we were looking into, okay, how can we document our processes? And how can we make sure that we have a good standard that we can use to not only document, but to improve them in the future? So that's where we went to the Camunda Community Day. And I remember that it was quite impressive and there were some uh, Camunda customers from the Münster area talking there and that was like, wow, 
but that will take us years. So by a good coincidence, it happened that Jakob needed a taxi to the train station after the meeting. And I was there by car. So I offered him, hey, let's go there together. I can give you a ride. So we had a nice chat in the car, and he gave me some good hints, like have a look at uh, BPMN and other stuff. So that, was basi that basically started our first steps on our journey there towards how to document processes and how to work with it. And now you can see that there is a big gap in between, which is basically because we first had to start documenting the processes in the standard notation, and we were working on many other parts that we had to prepare first. For example, we changed parts of the way how we deal with processes, how we work with processes, how we prioritize things. And I remember a statement in, I think, 2014 or 2015 that process automation is nice and it might be an interesting topic. But within the next five years, it's out of scope. But, as you can see over there, in 2016, we had a profile print, uh, proof of concept with Camunda. And actually, there, Niall and Felix, they visited us over in Malmö. We had a really, really good workshop and played around with a process that we never implemented. Back then, change requests, where we said, OK, this is kind of a process that we should go for. Um, but we never implemented it. And we back then took the decision to go with Camunda and to go for a first test. And that is actually the repro process that we did. Back then, a small process with limited scope. So no big system connections to any of the big systems, limited group of users, but still an important part because we're not only producing profile prints, but we're also producing our standard designs and that it ha basically has to go through this process. Um, and we went live just three months later with the first process and the user success was great because suddenly they did not have to worry about emails, Excel files, some other system, phone calls all the time, but they were able to look into a system and check, okay, where is the order that I'm talking about? And that really helped them. So we had a big discussion in the company and everybody was talking about, suddenly there was this thing where IT was able to deliver a project within three months and the users were happy. And uh, my boss, Jacek, our chief information officer, he was really happy too. And so discussion started in the company and just a couple months later we de decided, okay, now that everybody is so happy, show us that you can do something. And we were set up with the challenge to go for one of the core processes of Duni, or with a big part of the pro core process of Duni, which is profile print. And profile print, again, it's about customization. We were told, okay, there are, it's a big process and we are supposed to focus first on the part from customer contact till sales order is placed in the system. And this part went live in um, several countries in Europe in March this year, by now we're really successful with that. Um, customers are really happy, but we will have a couple more words about that. So profile print, as said, any kind of logo that you would want to like to print on a napkin, or you can print it on a cup, you can print it on a, I'm not sure if we can print on candles, but that would be a different story. But you can have table covers and all this kind of stuff. Look in our catalog, you will find good ideas what to do. So why did we need that project? Why was it so important for us at Duni? Um, in profile print, we were growing with 10% annually, which is good. We got many new customers, um, and pro uh, customization is everywhere. You can see it, you can customize your keyboard, you can get Coca-Cola bottles with your name on it, and all this kind of stuff. And the market is there. But the share of profile print in Duni is way lower compared to the share of profile print with our competitors. And we found that we were really good in getting new customers in that had never hired a profile print. But if we looked at the statistics over years, then 50% of our customers had a reorder. The next year, only 50% of our customers had a reorder. So the numbers were kind of equal. And that's a bad thing if you're ha getting a lot of new customers, because they went away after one order. So we went in and checked, OK, how does the process look alike? And from IT perspective, that was quite easy because we said, yes, this is FAP and we have this nice little diagram because you can see the flow is basically going here and back there and there and there and there. So from IT perspective, no problem. We have a good description. And I guess some of you might know the situations. Then we talked to our sales reps. And they said, ah, profile print, no problem. Um, a lot of paperwork, a black box in the middle, and at the end, hopefully, the profile print arrives in time at our customers, which is a good base. Um, I guess if you like black boxes, but we don't because 
you know the challenge. Then we said, okay, let's talk to the users inside the organization. <laughs> yeah. Basically how they felt like is that they had a lot of printouts because they received emails with files that they had to print. They worked with Excel files. The phone was ringing all the time. Tons of emails, as said. They were working with SAP, with Oracle. Uh, they had to use web browsers. Some places were on SharePoint. And in the end, they were all confused. And as you saw, all the countries, each country likes to have something specific, obviously. So no matter whom you talk to, there were other systems where the focus was. And you can imagine how confused the users were. They were not happy with the solution. And finally, we said, OK, then let's have a look at how the process is looking like. And this is just a small part of how it was. And you can see that this is looking a tiny little bit different compared to the diagram we saw before from IT. So obviously, there was one way how we thought the process is looking alike, one way the user perceived it, and one way it was actually executed. And that caused confusion. So taking this as a base, we defined several requirements towards the project. One was obviously that we had to work with the lead times, which meant that we had to deal with capacities in production, we had to talk about forecasting, but we also had to talk about expectations. Because our customers, when they talked to a sales rep and said, yes, I probably want to order at some point in time, they expect that this is the point in time when the lead time starts. Obviously, we measured the lead time at the point when the sales order was entered. And looking at the process, sometimes there is a couple months in between. So if you're talking about four weeks, that's a challenge. And especially now if you want to look at the customer and how he perceives our service as doing it. The next thing is that we saw the users were confused. And the challenge that we wanted to reach is that we wanted to have transparency across the process. So no matter whom you were talking to in this process, they all said, yes, but I have to call this person, I have to check the mails, and then there are so many mails that I don't know which one is valid. That was a good challenge. Um, and finally, we wanted to be able to implement something which we call web to print technology that our sales guys can go around and they have a nice tablet and they can select the article. And um, when they have the article, they, they can basically take an image of the logo from the customer, place it on the napkin and have a look how it looks like. Um, these files, however, need to be then again connected to our system. And that led us to a system landscape roughly, which is looking like that, that we in sales were working with Resco, which is an app for Dynamics. The sales reps are also supposed to work with web to print Somewhere there is our dynamic server where the orders appear. Camunda is supposed to be there. Oracle Cloud Services needs to be involved and SAP. And usually what is the best interface in between the systems? A user. Or at least previously. And that's something we wanted to change. So we really needed help here. And we said that the challenge in this project for Camunda is to be the orchestrator in between all the systems and orchestrator in the way that basically we always had to have one tool where the latest information were that is basically distributing the information to all the user and making sure that all the systems are aligned throughout the process. And that's what we started with. So what we ended up with, the business users, after a long time of discussion is this little diagram here. So it basically shows that customer service is involved, um, in this lane here, there's Profile Print Center. We have the graphics department down here with several functions. And you can see that there are many loops with special cases. For example, if we take an artwork and it's not printable, then we have to contact our customer. Or if the customer disagrees and we have to change something with a the print, then again, we have to have the option. It starts with an interface where we pull the orders from Dynamics to Camunda. And in this process, we execute all kinds of SAP, jobs. So for example, we create quotations, we create document numbers, we create sales orders, and make sure that throughout the whole process, the users in Dynamics can see that the order is in a certain state in SAP, where it is, and that the information is transparent and up-to-date everywhere. And one thing we defined with the users is basically, how are our processes to flow through? And there we defined the happy path for new orders, and what we expected is that the orders would flow through like this. So many steps would not be needed because all the decisions are, OK, let's go for it, let's do it. And you can see that there are many tasks that need to be executed, many breaks in between the departments, 
but finally we should end up in a position where the sales order is entered and we can finally start to produce a number. For our repeat orders, which is basically I'm a customer that has already ordered a, print, a profile print from Duni, I just want to have this print again because I'm really happy, so in the future more than 50%, we said then the flow needs to be much easier. So we said, okay, what are the steps that are relevant? And basically we can skip the whole big part where you ha we have to take the design from the customer and uh, yeah, create the artwork, make sure that we can print it, decide where to print it and all this kind of stuff. So it's a much faster flow and experience that we can now offer to the customer. And throughout this whole flow we have transparency. So as said, we went live um, with this process in March this year. We started to go, or we went live in Germany and Switzerland which are two big countries for us with many customers. And after a couple thousand orders that, that we rushed through the process, we found, okay, how is it really looking like? So we saw that actually a big part, like 50% of the orders were repeat orders up here. But we also found that for the new orders, there are certain loops that we tend to execute frequently. For example, the communication between the customer versus our customer service agents and the graphics department, like how is it supposed to look like? Where is it supposed to be placed it directly on the napkin? This is stuff that we found from those diagrams and with those diagrams we are now actively working with the departments to make sure that if there is high workload that we can escalate it, but if there is fields of information which have a big impact of the process that we can now actively improve it. And the whole thing, as we're working with the processes, as we are uh, actually dealing with it and the customer service can now focus on basically looking at the order, okay, where is the next step? And the other departments too, and it's not like, hey, I'm calling, hey, this order is too late, where is it? Oh, let me call somebody. So there we gained a lot of transparency and we can now start to be reactive. This is still a, long er, still a journey to go to improve every day and we're adding more and more countries, but we now have a really good base of transparency here and the users really like it because it took away all the emails that they had to write. So now that we talked so much about the users, let's have a little look at our test system so you can have a feeling how it looks like. What we did is we did not use the standard Camunda uh, task list, but we decided to create an own website application where the user can see the information. So for the users, we filter like the open orders, active or, or we basically filter on the orders that the particular user can execute and then you can see like open orders that are as these assigned to my department or my user group but you also have the possibility to search through all the orders and find an order and in there we now have the order templates with all the information you can see that we attach files to it so everything that went back and forth via mail is now in there and those files we can send to dynamics we can send them to SAP so it really helps us to improve and in addition we implemented something which we call history history is basically like a Twitter feed of all or of each order where it's basically it was started now it was processed by the department x y and the user can see okay who has processed it which comments did the person enter and how did the order flow and that really helps the user and gained us a lot of support from the users so looking at the challenges that we faced um, throughout the process obviously we were working with all the different systems and the different countries um, in order to create this process and we really had challenges to get the paper-driven communication out of the user heads, which is based to the fact that in some countries our users are somewhere on average close to end of 40 and working in the company since a really long time. In other countries the teams are younger. But it's kind of a challenge to make the user think how can it look like if we switch from paper and paper stacks that you're working over to a fully digital solution and to get this acceptance for the solution. Also the local procedures, like we always did it like this and this has to stay. And if the customer says that and if there is a special case, then we have to have this flow. That was also a challenge. Good thing is, for especially for local procedures, uh, we were able to show with the heat map that some of them are never used at all. So somewhere they stated they're super important. Yeah, 2,500 orders that we processed, they were executed twice. So there you can see how the transparency can help. Another challenge is that we as Duni, as said, we were kind of SAP driven and we as IT were usually following a waterfall methodology in development. Obviously this did not work in this project. 
as we were learning as we're doing and we had to switch to a more agile approach which in a way confused the users and it was a challenge but we faced it and we learned a lot from it and now we know how to basically design the application better because it does not help to define everything up front and then you switch it through because you will switch like the design and fu functionality throughout the process another part where we had to spend a lot of time was testing and cut over just to make sure that everybody is involved the good thing or that everything is working the good thing here is that due to all the testing the users were highly involved and that gained a lot of acceptance and they were trained afterwards quite well because they had to test all the time and now looking at the IT side as said we are more like SAP driven and when we started out with our first Camunda process repo we were working with students from university that we had hired, uh, like working for us part-time, and we started out this process. So for us, the challenge was to find good developers, developers capable of doing full-stack development. And that is actually a challenge that I think is still out there, that if you need more resources, those resources are hard to find because there's a big market for them. And that's something to be aware about. Another learning is that if you are running many software as a service solutions that are hosted by somebody and you cannot change them, then it's sometimes a challenge to integrate them, especially if you need some more fields or the interface needs to be able to provide data. That's where we were struggling, that's in some case, or that's where we were struggling in some cases, and where we learned that we had to plan much more time to make sure that there we really got the data from the systems into Camunda and later on back. And one lesson learned from us is that in the end, for one day of IT developing in this project, we require two days from the business for testing, definition, and later on go live. And that is actually a big lesson for us, because before it was always said IT is the bottleneck. And in this project, we basically were able to prove it's not IT. It's, in this case, the business, where we need more time. Yeah. Finally, one more point, which we think is kind of interesting now there is the word of Camunda that has spread and our company obviously there are m many happy users but now there is a threat that the users perceive that everything can be handled in Camunda and we can do it immediately so now one challenge that we are currently faced with and frequently changed with is the expectation management what can Camunda do where is it good at and what is not to be done with Camunda especially if we're talking about many other systems so I hope that you will get into this situation too it's kind of fun if the users are talking about it, but still the expectation management and to be able to have a continuously delivery process is a challenge here. Finally, mentioned already, the users like the application because it's much more transparent. They have a single tool where they can log into and they can see all the information. And our programmers love it. So for us, it really helped in the hiring process of new resources to basically show, hey, we're using a cool new technology and there are tons of opportunities what we can do. And finally, one point that is not on these slides here is that for us, from an IT, IT architecture management perspective, Camunda is a big help because we can now take the interfaces, have them in Camunda and eliminate kind of connections between all the systems but have them centrally. And that is helping us to maintain the interfaces and to keep track of them. Good. Now we have five minutes for questions. Yes, please. Yeah. This is a uh, waterfall. So you had a lot of scenarios here. Yeah. Uh, did you roll it out into production with only some scenarios and then add it to that? Or was that a, um, like a big bang uh, you talked about in March? Actually, talking about the rollout, um, w for the scenarios, we first decided to take Germany and Switzerland as they're basically causing, I think, 40% of the profile print orders and in order for those two countries to go live we had to implement a process that was capable of dealing with all the requirements um, and that was one of the challenges that we were unable to go live only with new orders or repeat orders but the process had to be able to take both um, but we tried to keep this version as small as possible so only the base functionality needed and now we're basically in a continuously delivery part after this process and that's the other countries are handled the same way, that we're taking those requir their requirements, checking if they can be, um, can run with the process as it is today, uh, and only if the requirements are really needed, then we push them to there. And there, our experience so far is that 
um, many of the requirements were that were stated up front got obsolete from the different markets. Yes, please. So, so from an IT or project perspective, would you have rather kind of rolled out only the hard part first and then... Uh, Sorry, the window here is quite would, would you have liked to have uh, just the happy part first and then roll out the exceptional parts uh, afterwards? Mm. Uh, well, it's a good question. It would have been a lot easier if we could have rolled out this part first, um, the happy path first, and then the exceptions. But I think that even though it would have been easier for us as IP, the user experience is much better. Because this way we had a really strong argument towards our users that, hey, there is a full-fledged solution that you can use and it covers your needs. And that got us a big buy-in from the users. So yes, from an IT perspective might be easier, but looking at the users, this is more helpful. Please. <laughs> Sorry, one more question. So now we have uh, two countries uh, yeah. this next year. And the next rollout we will do, uh, we need to figure out does that actually work with what we have now? So what is your regression testing strategy? Um, the testing test, or the how we tested it, or how we are testing it with the new countries. At first of all, we ha uh, we took the users and we took them to our test environment. We pushed a couple tests through, and we found that as we have taken the biggest countries, that requirements from the other countries are usually quite minimal. It's probably a new fields here, or that the organizational setup is a little bit different. So the testing requirements there are somehow limited. So, so the actual question was not going through with the with actual users, but the when we change the system, is that then uh, a manual task? Do you okay. have an automated uh, Both. suite or something uh, built with uh, teams? Both. When we are changing a version, we have uh, many JUnits tests implemented on or we're using Jenkins. And on our Jenkins server, when deploying, there are tons of tests going through. So the first step actually would be that the developer who is kind of implementing the solution has to test it before uploading it to our Git. Then it goes to Jenkins. On Jenkins, there are many JUnit tests implemented. It goes to the um, test system. Uh, from, or from dev system it goes to test system. On test system we force the users to test. So we are basically making sure that there is manual test because we want to have the user awareness about those changes and we want to have the user buy-in. And first when the users agree to do it, then we push it um, over. Okay. Not all the flow scenarios yet, yet, no. But that we there we define on the particular case what we want to test with the users and then we push many tests through. There is a more. And you also made in your test procedure in Camuna as well. Uh, no, it's not in Camunda yet. But that's a good idea for the future. Um, but actually one thing where Camunda really helped us, we were looking at the heat map. Um, oops, what? Sorry. At the heat map, and throughout the tests, what we frequently did to make sure that we are covering all the needs, just a second, we used the heat map functionality here actually during testing quite a lot. Because before every test, we simply swiped all the data from our test system. We said that we want to cover certain flows, and we used the heat map to check if those were executed. And that was actually quite fun because some parts were to be executed by the users without us. And using the heat map, we were able to check if they executed them a couple days later. And then it was like, here's the picture, you did not execute it, or you executed it properly. So that's where Camunda helped us in a way to test, but not with an automated <laughs> process. <laughs> Any other questions? Otherwise, I guess we're in time. One minute. <laughs> Thank you very much.